everybody Let's we started go. kind of close to on time this time <laughs> so, an improvement <laughs> what's up on? everybody should we do like intros and stuff i feel like last time we were like you guys should know us yeah come on <laughs> we're like super famous like we just got back on the met like we're like come on <laughs> Who doesn't, who doesn't uh, for those of you that don't know, I am Hawa, also known as Hawa the Human. I gotta do like a radio voice. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I run a lot of comms and in uh, social media at Spatial, um, just doing like branding and marketing stuff. So if you see a tweet or an ID post or a newsletter. Or other things. <laughs> you your probably... thumbs and your brain. So. <laughs> yeah. And GPT-4. We love GPT-4. <laughs> Hello, we have somebody from New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey. Cool. 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 East Coast. East Coast, best coast. Yeah, low-key. Actually, I don't know. That's debatable because I low-key love the West Coast too. <laughs> West Coast. No, no hail on the West Coast. Definitely. The 72 and sunny if you're in L.A is right. like, wasn't it I raining know. for like the past month in uh new york too i was just in vancouver for ted a couple weeks ago and it was like 45 and like light drizzle the whole time which is like very typical vancouver like, weather yeah. yeah vancouver seattle weather wow we got brazil in here brazil awesome. texas that's awesome it's awesome spations that's around cool. the world Sure, global. Spain, we saw saludos desde España. I was not going to try because my Spanish is so bad. Mine is horrendous, but I'm sorry if I just totally demolished my, <laughs> my high school Spanish does not live up. To- <laughs> oh, God. I like literally like French was like my first language and I can barely speak it now because my mom always wanted to talk to me in English so that she could learn English. And I'm like, no, talk to me in French so I can keep my French. <laughs> oh, man. Backwards. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Jake. I'm Social's head of community, also leading our uh, developer relations, our creator toolkit program uh, as well. Um, been on Spatial like two years or so, um, but it's awesome. This is our second live stream um, for the creator toolkit that we're doing. Numero dos. Um, <laughs> Not and four, then, just two. Yeah, just two. Yeah, two. <laughs> Clearly, I'm the student. The student yeah. being taught today. I'm the master. You are. No, I did it too. <laughs> oh, okay, great. <laughs> we are both not smart. No, just kidding. Good, well, I'm really good. excited for this, guys. For those of you that don't know, this is teaching the toolkit. As y'all know, we uh, just launched it. Uh, we had it in beta for a few months. Um, it's pretty much just an incredible toolkit powered by unity jay could probably tell you a lot more about it as i am learning it um but it really empowers you to build like so many incredible things on our platform and publish really easily no coding really simple and i've always been like kind of like uh like i want to hop in but i'm like i need somebody to like help me out and i know a lot of you guys feel that way so this is why we created this so jake you probably will have some other students and some other teachers as well can kind of help you along your unity journey which is exciting last yeah. time i learned how to like make materials and add in 3d objects which was freaking huge from sketchfab <laughs> and we got we got in blender too for a second we did I know this one's minor but it was really exciting and i know how to do that now and it was really simple a lot of drag and drop so today jake if you want to explain what we're going to be doing today yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep going on our journey from from last week. We like last week, right? We just did like super basic, like what's Unity? Kind of did a little quickly too. Um, went around the interface a bit. Started to take a look at the the toolkit and like how I said, like made a very simple scene, like understood materials. Um, and today we're gonna take that a step further um, and gonna go into quests. So we're gonna take the space that we made and gonna make a little game out of it using the quest system in uh, with the creator toolkit. Um, so yeah, let's just, we're just going to hop in. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Right. So for those of you guys that don't know what the quest system is, we're obviously going to hop into it, but it's really cool. And it just allows you to add like guided guidedness <laughs> to, to your spaces and pretty much take your community and your like friends and everybody through an experience. 
a lot of people have been building like full on quests. I don't know if you guys saw recently, if you go and hop on our homepage, the first space on the carousel right now is Treasure Island. So you can build things as crazy as Treasure Island with the quest system. But you can also like, you know, take people through your gallery. You can take people through an educational space. You can take people through pretty much any type of guided experience that you want. So this is exciting. I guess we're going to demo Treasure Island right now. It's so insane that this is literally on the platform right now. I was shook. I added the most like cinematic song <laughs> to the to the video that I posted. Um, and also we do have docs for all of this. So if you want to read about all of this, just head to, is it docs.spatial? Yeah, exactly. So here docs.spatial.io. There you um, go. We've got all the docs for everything you need, including our tutorial videos that we've done. We've got one for Quest coming soon. Might actually integrate some of the stuff we're doing today into that. Um, so yeah, if you need like any all the reference you need, and even we have a whole samples library too, you can check it out there. Um, yeah, awesome. Also, we had one question just really quick, Jake. Someone said, could we give a high level view of what spatial is? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to do that. Um, yeah. Happy to do that. Um, so I'm in the space now because I'm going to show you this great quest from Treasure Island um, by the, the team at Spacey's Autumn Agency. Um, but yeah, Spatial is a platform where anyone can really easily build or explore 3D worlds. You can build with Unity or even drag and drop right within the web browser. And you can build these spaces and have them instantly accessible in a web browser on mobile. We have iOS and Android apps and in VR. So you can see right now I'm in spatial. I just clicked right in uh, in, uh, in my Chrome browser. Uh, and this is just a link. So I could take this link and I'm going to put it in the chat here. This may not get shared across all. We're currently streaming across YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, so this may just get shared on uh, over on YouTube, or um, I believe. Um, actually, it's getting shared to YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. So if you're on those channels, I uh, just put the link in the chat, but it's also right on the home screen on Spatial. So if you just go to spatial.io, it's the first thing you'll see is Treasure Island. Um, but we can jump right in there and it's a multiplayer experience, right? There's other people in this space now. We can go on this adventure with them uh, and I can talk with them. So we provide the voice video text chat um, in, in the system uh, and a whole discoverability engine. So there's literally millions of people in spatial, millions of worlds uh, and spaces that have been built today um, and more getting created every single day. And we recently launched the Creator Toolkit a few months ago to make it even easier for people to build experiences uh, on the Absolutely. platform. Absolutely. It's super dope. You can also hop in from your phone, which is my favorite way of hopping into spatial. Um, also VR, a lot of people like to do that. So yeah, it's pretty much your world in 3D. You know, a lot of people do concerts, people do galleries, people build mini games. You can network. A lot of people, um, you know, hold their work meetings, including us. We do our meetings every Friday in 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 platform, which is really really fun. Uh, so yeah, I see a question here that says like, is, is it for networking? And I do believe like spatial at its core is like not a networking tool, but a connecting tool. You know, you're able to just connect with people in so many different ways all around the world. So it's it's really, really exciting. And um, it's groundbreaking, honestly, the fact that you can just hop in from, um, you know, your web browser, which is insane, especially with builds of this level, like Treasure Island. Um, but yeah, if you want to hop in, Jake, we can kind of explain uh, what the Quest system is to this degree. You can use it for a lot of different things, but this is just one example of how you can use uh, the Quest system. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Quest is really, you know, we introduced Quest as a mechanism to make it really easy for you as a creator, as a space builder, to instruct people that come into the space of like things to do in the space. You know, a Quest could be something like Treasure Island, which I consider like almost like a Zelda-like adventure, right? You're going on an actual quest and exploring a world and, and doing things. But a Quest could also be, hey, uh, uh, like look at this piece of art. Um, or do something a little more, you know, more passive um, and things like that as well. Uh, it doesn't always have to be the, the epic you know, kind of quest thing, um, but it's really giving people a set of things to do and then letting them know when they've completed those tasks and even giving them the ability to be rewarded for completing those tasks. Absolutely. So you can see here in this space, I jumped in, the quest uh, interface is here in the bottom left corner. You can see as I, I kind of walk away or as I, don't have my mouse over it, it's, it's uh, hides in the corner. And then when I hover my mouse over it, 
uh, it expands so I can see details. So right now, uh, the quest is to talk to the captain, and the task is just that one task, to talk to the captain. So when I go over and find the captain here, I have this interactable pop-up. You can see this, the F key pops up. So when I press the F key, it goes through this. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the captain's now talking to me. Uh, I've muted it, so you can't. I don't know if that'll come through. Yeah, probably can't hear it. Okay, it's not coming through. No. But so anyway, he's telling me, you know, he's explaining he's explaining the quest. In this case, the species, they there was a audio voiceover as well as the text on screen, and they introduced this map system, which is just using the Unity um, 2D UI, um, which you can use uh, to show me like where I am and things like that. Absolutely. Um, and just a quick question really quick. Someone said, love the avatars. Yes, you can change your outfit. A lot of the uh, avatars that you guys are seeing are with our partners, Ready Player Me. You can easily, like if Jake just clicks in the bottom right there, you can just click edit avatar and edit your avatar and change your clothes. Also, the spaceship that he is right now, though, is a custom avatar that you can actually build as well with, with uh, Unity. So maybe we'll do another um, teaching the toolkit moment with that where you guys can kind of learn how to custom make avatars um but yes it's super easy you can pick just an avatar up there or edit it right in screen uh, change your clothes change your hair there's a lot of like maybelline makeup looks and l'oreal hair looks so it's really really fun changing your outfit um and yes someone said that they they host podcasts on spatial and that is also a possibility that's awesome yeah there's so many different things you can do um and each of these like we can go into future videos so if there's so, you know suggestions or things you want to learn about in future you know future live streams future videos definitely let us know uh we'll do those uh yeah we'll do those in the coming weeks especially like yeah custom avatars and things like that there's so many creators that are building so many cool custom avatars um so we're definitely going to go through that future um but for today i'm really going to focus on the quest system it looks like there's a lot of people hopping in here which is awesome um, so we're going to go through the quest system. So you can see after I spoke to the captain, I now have a new quest, which is collect three planks. And this is a different kind of quest. Um, whereas before it was completing one specific action and I complete that task. Now I have what's called a progress task, meaning there's, I can, I need to do a couple of things within one task in order to complete it, which in this case, it's collect three planks. So I have to find, I have to go around the island here and find three planks. And then as I find them, that progress will, you know, I'll be one step added uh, in the progress of this uh, task. So let's see if I can find one. Of I was them. looking everywhere for those dang planks. I was like, <laughs> no, they're pretty well. Hidden. They are. That reminds me of the one Easter egg, uh, Easter egg hunt that was on there. They were so hard to find. It was so much fun. Yeah, uh, I've been through this space before, and I still can't remember where, I where they were. I mean, this is a huge space; it's massive. Yeah. It kind of just shows the power of Unity. Like you know, you can have something of this scale on, on your phone, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, right in your phone, right in a web browser, like super easy to get into. And in VR, if you wanted to do this in VR, um, the Quest system doesn't isn't visible yet in VR. We'll bring that to VR soon, but you could hop into this space. Um, in, in VR on the Meta Quest. So there was one question, Jake. What functionality can be scripted in Unity for experienced developers? I'm assuming it's pretty tightly sandboxed to systems you have created like this Quest system, which I don't think, I think visual scripting is pretty like pretty much like blowing the brakes off. Um, if yeah, I'm it's, it's really flexible. So we do support visual scripting within Unity using Unity's, uh, what was known as Bolt. Um, so the visual scripting system, we support just you know, a, a huge number of nodes within the visual scripting system, plus our own custom nodes that tie in specifically to spatial. Um, we can get the link that has the full. Um, if you go into actually, if you go into our documentation uh, and down into visual scripting, you can learn everything about um, what we support in visual scripting as well, including all like the limitations and the list of nodes um, that we support, as well as an introduction for those who don't know what visual scripting is. Yeah, and I also that. remember Waldo, which is our director of engineering. He was like, he was honestly shocked by, I think he like put in Slack the other day, Jake was like, I actually was shocked by what we could do with visual scripting. I think he was saying like what we've been marketing is like actually too limited. Like you can do more, more so. So I definitely encourage people to like play around and 
uh, see what you can do, especially if you're more experienced with uh, with Unity. Uh, yeah, we, have, wanna, we have a community that's really prone to hacking things. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to see a good example of like a type of game you can build in the toolkit, we showed it a little last week, um, is the game Hyperjump. So that's a game you can play uh, in Spatial. Uh, if you just search for Hyperjump uh, in Spatial, it's also a sample that we provide in the in the Creator Toolkit uh, starter, uh, uh, starter template. Mm -hmm. uh, it's right here under uh, when you download the starter template, you get these samples. Here's Hyperjump. Uh, and there's the scene. You can actually open it up, pull it apart, and see how visual scripting is used in that scenario to build a game. Uh, we are also building a number of other games and samples in-house um, that you'll see in the next month or so. We're going to be releasing those, which are really going to be really fun to play. And we'll definitely do a deep dive into how those are made with visual scripting. In terms of uh, you know, developing without visual scripting. Uh, we don't support, <clears throat> excuse me, we don't support C-sharp today. We are looking into supporting other languages like TypeScript uh, later this year. So stay tuned uh, for that. Yes. And also yeah. let us know, guys, if y'all can see the screen, if you guys want our faces up, whatever, just let us know the vibes. Um, but I know we have to kind of like zoom in for some of these. Um, <clears throat> like little to, and stuff. You know, see if yeah. I can make it a little bigger or something like that. Sometimes it's hard to. Yeah, I know. Sometimes we can go full screen too, Jake. It's up to you. I know we got to be able to zoom in sometimes. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> let's hop in. Let's learn how to make a quest. Let's do it. All right. So here we have our beautiful blue space that we. <laughs> and our cat. <laughs> our cat, our wonderful, crazy textured cat. From... Just a little recap, guys. This cat is from Sketch Vibe, and I. We added this um, crazy material and texture to it. Um, so there's that. And then we also kind of added some some color to the wall here. Um, and then we kind of just went over the basis. But now we're kind of going to add our quest system to, I guess we're just going to keep building onto this space, which is kind of fun yeah. um, as we keep going along. Um, but yeah, just a little recap for those of you guys that were not here last week. Yeah, definitely. So for this quest, um, I'm thinking just two, we're going to have two steps to the quest, going to make it like very simple. We're going to stick with this space and just build onto it. Um, so the first, uh, the first task, we're, we're going to have two tasks. One is going to be finding the staircase. Um, and then the second task is collecting all the, um, the collectibles that we have in this space. So this scene is, this is the spatial, uh, spatial island scene. So this is actually one of the samples that we provide. Um, it has some lights. It has the scene, it has the water, like all of this you can reuse and remix for your own projects also, um, including some chairs and seat hotspots. And then we also already provide some of these collectibles uh, at the top here. And, and each of these collectibles is, is a trigger. Basically, when, you, uh, when your avatar intersects with one of these things, we can make something happen. Um, right now, just to quickly look at like what triggers do, if I choose one of these collectibles here from the left-hand side, you can see each of these has a trigger within within each within each object is trigger event, which is a, a specific spatial trigger event. So basically, uh, when in this case a local avatar, meaning the person you know in the experience, when they trigger that this object, meaning when they intersect with it, something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So here we can define what happens uh, with these things. In this case, right now. Uh, we have a particle system that plays, uh, which is, you kind, of, you kind of saw it there, this like little explosion particle system. So we're going to play that. And then we have this other thing called set active, which basically means tur like make the object visible or invisible. So we have set active, and then this little empty checkbox here is empty, which means we're setting the active state too empty, meaning we're going to turn it off, basically. So when someone walks into this collectible, we're going to have that confetti particles play, and then we're going to hide it. Basically, it looks like we're collecting that item. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll get into how we're, we can add this into our quest system as well. So we're going to have two things. One is finding the staircase, and then the other is collect all the collectibles uh, here in the scene. In this case, we have, looks like five of them uh, in this scene. So to start, so to start, we have to kind of define like the logic or the steps of our quest. So to do that over in the, uh, the scene hierarchy here on the left-hand side, I'm just gonna make this bigger. The scene hierarchy here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna right click 
I'm going to go down to spatial, and then we have a specific uh, type called a quest. So we can set that up. And this is where we're going to really like define our quest and, and what it, you know, what's all in, you know, part of the, our quest. And you can have multiple quests um, in a scene, really as many quests as you want in a scene. You can only have one active at a time, however. So just keep that in mind. Right now, we're just going to set up one quest uh, in our space. So you just went to scenes, right? And just you just add quests from there, right? Yep, so on the left-hand side here, so these are all the items in my scene. I just right-clicked and then went to Spatial and then clicked on Quest to set okay. up a quest. Got it. So we're just going to call this, in case we had others, I'll just call this Quest 1. And then with that selected, I'm going to come over on the right-hand side into the inspector. This is where all the details are about the quest in the scene. Basically, some of this information is what's going to appear in that interface in the bottom left corner you saw before. This is where we're going to input that text. Um, so we have the quest name. So that's going to be like the title of the quest. So we can call this, um, or let's call this, you know, uh, collect all the gems. Oh, so this is, so this is the task. So this is I, this probably a better name for the quest. Let's just call, let's just call this let's just call this our quest. Okay. Let's make that easier. So we'll call this our quest. Um, and then a description we can have a little subtitle beneath it that says you know this is our first quest. Woohoo! Like that. <laughs> and so that's going to show up in that uh, interface in the bottom left corner. We'll see what that looks like shortly. Um, and then below that, we have some other things that we can uh, we can enable here. So the first is start automatically. What that means is as soon as someone comes into the space, is that quest going to instantly start? Will that interface, that quest interface in the bottom left corner show up right away? Or you know, if we have that disabled, we'd want to have something that starts the quest for us. That could be an interactable. It could be when you enter a specific area the quest starts, right? Something that triggers the quest from starting. Um, you know, it could be, you know, after you talk to a character, it could be really whatever you want. You can define if you want a quest to start at a specific time. In this case, for the sake of, you know, our, our demo today, we're just going to have this start automatically. So as soon as we're, we are loaded into the space, the quest is going to start and we'll see that pop up. The next is save user progress. So this one, you know, we'll keep this enabled. What basically that means is um, that you can see as I highlight over, we give a little uh, definition of what that means. Their, um, someone's progress, as they go through the quest, their progress will be saved. So when, if they only complete part of the quest, and when they, um, they can, so they can only complete part of the quest, and when they come back uh, in the future, that progress will be saved so they can start in the middle of the quest. So you don't have to feel like if there's a long quest like Treasure Island uh, takes a, takes some time to complete, you don't have to complete all that in one sitting. We'll save your progress. So when you come back, you can finish or keep moving through the quest. Uh, tasks are ordered. So through a quest, you know, there could be different styles of quests. You can have a quest where there's lots of things to do at once and you can kind of choose your own adventure and choose which order of tasks, uh, choose the order of the tasks that you go in to complete. Or if the tasks have to complete, be completed in a certain order, you can essentially enforce someone to complete tasks in a specific order. And we'll define that order below. And then the last is celebrate on complete. So when you finish uh, all the tasks, we play this awesome confetti an animation um, when all the tasks are completed. It's like a cool, fun way to celebrate you completing that quest. Um, this is enabled by default. We're going to keep that enabled, but you can turn that off if you didn't want that or you wanted something else to play at the end of the quest. Then uh, coming down here, we have quest, quest rewards. So now we can reward people with things when they complete the quest. Um, right now, if I click this, we have an empty list, so I can add a reward to the space. If I click this plus button, you can see I have a type of reward. Right now, that type is a badge, so I can reward a badge that someone shows off uh, on their profile. Just to show yeah, you- Yeah, we love badges. The badges have been doing really great. <laughs> yeah, badges are awesome. People love getting their badges. So if I go to my profile, for example, 
if I scroll down, you can see what spaces I've published, but also down here, you can see all the badges that I've collected. And I've been I've been putting in some work getting these badges. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. So so yeah, people can reward um, badges, and then pe you can show them off on your profile. I can view all, and then see all the all the different badges that I've completed, and then even has a link to the spaces where I've collected those collected those badges. So this is just an image, and you can define you know what the the badge uh, looks like uh, in your space. So here we can choose that we want to reward a badge. Um, hint, hint, other reward types are coming soon later this month, so stay tuned. You can awesome. reward things that aren't just 2D, <laughs> but we'll get into that. We'll get into that in a future future live stream. Um, and then I can choose a badge that I want to set up. We'll set that up at the end. Uh, there's a different interface for doing that, but I can reward a badge at the end, which is really cool. All right, so we've set up like the basics for our quest. Now we can define what do people actually have to do to go on this quest? What are the tasks that they have to do? So coming down here, we have this tasks dropdown. So I can open that up. And in this case, next to this box, uh, excuse me, in this box that says zero, that's how many tasks that you know we'll want to have in our quest. So in this case, we said we want to do two, uh, two tasks. So I'm going to type in two. And now it automatically puts in two tasks that I need to fill in here. So like we said, the first task that we want to do is find the staircase. And within each task, there are different types of tasks that you can have. So uh, there is a check uh, task type and a progress bar task type like we saw before. So check means I do one thing, like I talk to the captain, then I complete that task. Or in this case, I find the staircase. I found it, boom, it's one thing, check the box. I completed that task. Uh, progress bar is what we were showing before. That'll be in task two, meaning there's a few things that I need to do in order to complete uh, that task, meaning I collect a few things. So task one, find the staircase, and that's just a check. And then uh, below that, we also have, we just added recently, the ability to add task markers. So if you wanted to have almost like a heads up display, we were it wasn't showing it, it wasn't enabled in Treasure Island, but if you wanted to have a, a heads up display where you can show someone on screen where they need to go in order to find that task, if it's go to a certain area, we can put a task marker uh, on screen. We'll skip that for right now for simplicity, but we'll come back to that uh, later. And now task two is. Um, collect all the gems. So we want to collect all of these gems that we have here at the top uh, of the screen. And we're going to make this a progress bar um, item, a progress bar task. And then when we chose that, we got this other option for progress steps. So how many steps are there in order to complete that task? Now, as we saw before, we've got, uh, we've got five collectibles here at the top. So we're going to make the progress steps five in this case. So cool. All right, we have our quest set up and ready to go. So now we actually have to, you know, define when these tasks, you know, happen. How do we determine when someone completes a task? So let's start with find the staircase. So to find the staircase, you know, our staircase is back here, spoiler alert. And we want them to find, you know, we're going to want them to find the bottom of the steps. So what I'm going to do is I want to put a trigger at the bottom of the steps here. It, it'll be invisible, but we'll put a trigger here at the bottom of the steps. So to do that, so that, that will, what would the trigger be doing? So the trigger is going to be essentially what uh, triggers the completion of our first task. Okay, got you. Okay, so finished. yeah, so let's. I'm going to right click in the scene here on the left, go into spatial. And we're going to create a trigger event. And that also, creates... guys, there is a YouTube video up on our YouTube for triggers that Jake has already created as well. So if you need some more um, assistance on triggers. There it is. Yeah, we'll link to that um, in the comments on the YouTube. So the, all the, this video by this live stream gets saved on YouTube. Um, so for people who miss it, um, this will be live on YouTube when we're done here. So, and we'll link to the trigger uh, tutorial video as well. 
So I'm just gonna make this full screen. So you can see when I created this trigger event, it created this trigger um, object here. And that gave us two things. It gave us a sphere collider. And I'm just gonna make this 3D icon smaller so you can see it. So it gave us this sphere collider, which basically allows us to um, define this area that will act as our trigger. And then it gave us the spatial trigger event, which basically allows us to tell spatial when someone does something in the space. And the sphere collider allows us to define where that is. You know, this could be a box collider. It could be other shapes. We give it to you as a sphere collider. It's just a little bit of a better shape um, when it comes to detecting when someone goes in and out of that space. So we have the sphere collider and I want this to be detected when someone gets to the bottom of the steps. So you can see, I can move this, I can click on the arrows, move this around. Uh, and then because I have my transform tool selected here, which gives me all, all the different transform types, meaning I can move it left and right, up and down. I can rotate it, which for a sphere, you know, there's no reason to do that. And then I can also scale it. So I can click this cube in the middle and scale the sphere up and down. So I want this trigger, basically I want someone to have to come in, in this area at the bottom of the steps here. So they walk into this area. I'm gonna move this below the floor a little bit. I want them to come into this area and that will trigger the um, that task to complete. So we defined our area for where this trigger happens. So now if I go over to the trigger event, we want to define, we want to basically say, all right, someone's walked into this trigger. Let's complete that task. They completed the task of finding the staircase. So under, under our trigger event, we have an on enter event. So someone, someone enters this, uh, this collider, this trigger, we have a specific event just for quests. So we have things like unity events or animator events, meaning, you know, we can define things to happen in the unity scene with animators. We can play animations if we wanted to, or we can have something happen with our quest system. So under quest events, I'm gonna click plus. And now when I click plus, now we can choose our quest that we created. Or you know, if we had multiple quests, we can specify which one. In this case, we just have the one quest called our quest. So I'm gonna choose that. And then under the next dropdown, we can define what happens um, with in regards to that quest. So we can start the quest. So this is an example of using a trigger to start a quest if it didn't start automatically. We can reset the quest. Um, so, and this is like a fail state. So if someone like, you know, falls off the edge of the map or they, you know, die or something else happens in the scene that would, you know, want you, want you to have them start the quest over again, you can reset the quest. We can also add task progress, which we'll do in the second, uh, the second task, or in this case, complete task. So since the task of finding the step, finding the steps is just a check task type, we can choose complete task. Wait, so every task after this, Jake, would be add task progress or? Yeah, so we'll show, I'll show you how we do that. But for the, the next task, which is collecting the gems, that, mm -hmm. is, a, that is a progress, uh, add task progress type. Okay. Because we're adding progress. Right, it's right. collect one, collect two, collect three, collect four. Gotcha. So we're gonna complete task and then we can choose which task we wanna complete. So in this case, we'll choose our find the staircase task. And, that, and that's it. So now when someone walks into this sphere area, they won't see this. People in, in spatial will not see this sphere. This will be invisible. This is just for us to have a visual indication of that. But when someone walks into this sphere here, then our quest task, find the staircase, will be complete. And we'll move on to the next, next task since they, they are ordered. We define them in our quest item here to be uh, ordered. So you have to complete task one in order for task two uh, to become an option. So, okay, great. So we've completed uh, uh, task one. I'm just going to call this trigger event um, bottom of the stairs trigger. 
And now let's uh, see how we're going to complete our second task. So our second task, right, is collecting the gems. So if I come over to these collectibles, I'm just going to click F to zoom in once I've selected it. It's like a quick zoom, nice little shortcut. And on each of these uh, collectibles here, um, I'm going to add task progress. But instead of um, adding the kind of quest trigger into each one individually, I'm actually going to do it just once and it'll apply to all of them. So how am I going to do that? Um, so for those who aren't familiar in Unity, you have this concept of a prefab or prefabricated object, prefab for short. Um, and those are indicated by, in our scene view, items that are blue, where the text is blue. That means it's a prefab object, which means it's uh, one object that's made up of many objects, but is reusable. So instead of having to rebuild this collectible item every time that contains, you can see it contains a trigger, uh, within the trigger it contains a cube, and then it also contains particles. Instead of having to rebuild this uh, collectible every single time, I can create it once and just reuse it uh, many times. So we actually provide um, that collectible for you here as, uh, as a prefab. You can see here if I search for collectible at the bottom and, and I click on it here, you can see this is a, a prefab asset when I click on it in the top here, it says prefab asset, and it's indicated by this blue cube. That means it's a prefab, meaning it's made up of you know, multiple uh, different objects. And I can just click and drag this into the scene here like that. And now we have another collectible in the scene. I didn't have to rebuild it every single time, which is really nice. Um, yeah, that's super nice. You don't have to, because like they're, they become pretty complex after a while. So having to build each part of that would be definitely annoying. Um, yeah. I didn't so know this, that. That's dope. Yeah, just really quick on like, how do you create a prefab? So we, we, we provide this one to you. Um, so if I wanted to create a prefab, I'm going to make something like super simple. So I'm going to uh, create, we're going to add a, a cube here. And we're going to, let's just make this, let's find a material that we have um, already. So I'm just going to search all my materials. Let's just take like this bluish, or let's take actually this green one. So it's a little more noticeable like that. And then I'm also going to add, just so it's made up of multiple objects, I'm just going to add a sphere to it. And kind of add like the sphere on top of it. So we have like this little, almost like character thing. And you can see I right clicked on the cube and added sphere and that made it the sphere, a child of the cube itself. So they're like, they're associated with one another. So when I click on the cube, you can see I have this drop down. That means the sphere is technically part of the cube. So when I select the cube, which is the parents, so those things called parent child relationships, um, the cube is the parent, the sphere is the child. Uh, and just like a child does, um, it'll follow the parent around. So when I move the cube, the sphere is a part of that and it's moving with it. So they're now one object, they're one unit uh, together. But I wanna make this, I'm gonna wanna reuse this random object that I just made. You know, I wanna reuse it multiple times in my scene like the collectibles. Um, but I don't wanna have to go through it and, and do those three steps each time. So I'm gonna make this a prefab. So I'm just gonna click on the cube, the parent object, click and drag, and click and drag and release it into my assets, uh, my project assets folder at the bottom here. When I click and release it, it's now a prefab. So you can see here at the top, this is now a prefab asset. And this is, they're all combined together here like this. So now when I come down into my projects folder where all my assets are, or my models, my materials, all that stuff, I can just click and drag from here and bring it into my scene, just like that. So obviously you can get way more complicated with prefabs in terms of like, they can have sounds, they can have, you know, animations, they can have, you know, they can have uh, like visual script nodes attached, all kinds of things like that. Um, you can get really complicated with what they are, but that's real, the real basics of, of what a prefab is. Um, all right. Dope. Yeah, really useful. Um, if you've never used them before, highly recommend. So, all right, so let's take the concept of the prefab and apply it here to our quest. So remember, we're 
uh, we have these collectible items here and each, uh, our task now is to collect all of these gems, all these collectibles uh, in the scene. So every time a, um, a user comes into the scene here and they interact or intersect with this cube, you can see we have a trigger on it. We want those particles to play. We also want to add a have a quest event to add the task progress. But I'm not going to add it to each one of these because that takes time, especially if I had you know 100 of these collectibles. Like That would take a really long time to add them each manually. So instead, I'm going to update the prefab. And when I update the prefab, all of the cubes will be updated as well. So to update the prefab, um, you can see I'm just going to go over to the collectible item, that, which again is indicated by the blue text. And over on the right, there's a little arrow pointing away from it. If I click on that, I now I'm in kind of prefab editing mode. And you can see that object is highlighted. I think I can hear like you can hear one of your videos playing in the background. You can hear a video playing in the background. Yeah, I think. Oh, I, I'm not playing any videos. Weird. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's one of your scenes. Are, are we good? How are you there? Did I lose you? <laughs> no, I'm here. Sorry. I oh. think the LinkedIn just started like playing over like this tab, which is weird. Uh, but no, we're good. Okay. <laughs> Continue. Sorry about that. That's, that's all good. That's all good. <laughs> I was like, wait, I hear two Jakes and two me's. What's happening here? <laughs> I just cloned myself. We'll get into yeah, that. I was like, whoa, Spatial has superpowers. <laughs> you can't clone yourself. We'll do that in a future video. <laughs> cool. But yeah, so we're in our prefab editing mode. So basically when I edit this, um, this collectible, it's going to automatically replicate to the other collectibles because those are prefabs. Um, so we have our trigger here. So on the trigger event, again, we have the quest event. So I'm just gonna add a quest event here. So right when I trigger this, this cube, this collective, when I walk into it, I want uh, I want to add task progress uh, to my quest. So I'm gonna choose our quest, choose in this case, add task progress, because this is, we're collecting five of them. There's a sequence of five. And then I'm gonna choose the collect all the gems tasks. So now every time a, someone triggers one of these cubes or collects one of these collectibles, when they walk into it, it's going to increment that task progress by one. And we defined in our quest at the beginning that the task progress has five progress steps within it. So when we've added task progress five times, we will have completed uh, this task, and in this case, this entire quest. Um, so we've added our quest event there, and this is within the prefab. So now if I um, just save, I just command or control S, and if I hit this arrow in the top left to go back, now if I go into, you can see here, if I go to our trigger, we have our quest event on it. And if I go into the other collectibles, they all also have the quest uh, uh, event on it as well. So I was able to change them all really, really quickly. So now let's test this out and see how it works. So I'm just going to save and I'm just going to double check that this space is the active package. So I just clicked on the spatial portal at the top. This is our teaching toolkit package with, you know, the R space defined here, which is the environment. So I'm just checking that. I'm not going to publish since that'll take, you know, up to 15 minutes, depending on, you know, how many people are publishing right now. Um, but I'm going to test this. So we have our testing sandbox. So you can easily test, um, in this case, like your triggers and your quests, test that within the context of spatial uh, in your sandbox. So I'm going to click test active scene. And we have an error. We have one of our first errors. All right. What is our error? Let's refresh this. Invalid reward badge on quest, our quest. All right, so we forgot to add a badge to our quest. 
So this is a great example of how we, we like handle our errors. badges, Jake. We need our, we need our badges. No, <laughs> this is why I need a reminder. <laughs> so this is a great example of like how we handle errors uh, within uh, within the creator toolkit. We want to make it like super easy and super clear. If there's something that's not going to work, and uh, we point that out for you. So we're telling you you need you know you need a badge because we only because we said that we want to reward a badge in the quest, um, but we forgot to define one. And as you can see here, you know this is the error, and then which which object in our scene is throwing that error? You can see target object. If I click select it's going to automatically highlight in our scene which object that error is related to. So that was our quest object. And if you remember here, we said quest reward, going to give a badge, but we didn't define a badge. So let's go and define a badge. This will be really quick. So back in the spatial portal window, if I, uh, you have the different tabs, if I click on badges at the top, here is where I can create new badges. Um, so I believe, let me double check. I believe we, we don't here actually, but we can create a new badge quickly. So we provide a template for you since it has to be a 1024 by 1024 circle, circular badge icon. Uh, we give you this badge template. So if you click on download badge template, we actually have this, uh, Canva here and I'm just going to use Canva and use this template. This is wildly easy. Like I had no idea that you could like, it was like sync to Canva like this. That's crazy. Yeah. And we actually provide you all these samples in Canva that you can use if you'd like, or, you know, just use as examples or remix them. Right. You, you can download these out of Canva and use them in your own tool. Um, these are just PNGs. Um, but here we provide you with, with these different quests. Awesome. Uh, so it's, just, so it's just a JPEG or a PNG, right? Yeah. 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 So with, within Canva, you can, you know, here in this case, let's say I'm going to go with this one. I, I love rockets. Um, so we're going to click share and I'm going to click download. And I'm just going, we're going to choose, uh, we have PNG selected. I'm going to choose transparent background. Um, that way, like the white background doesn't appear. We'll just get the circle. And I'm just going to choose current page, page 11. And don't change the size. Keep this as 1024 by 1024. And we click download. And this will get us our badge here. And then I'm going to actually, I have to add this into my Unity project. So I'm just going to go back to just, just the top here. I'm going to create a new folder for badges just to keep myself organized. I'm going to go in there. And I'm just going to drag. Just really quick, I see we all have a QA at the end. Definitely throw your questions in, guys. And I, I tend to try to answer them at the end along with Jake. So if you have questions along the way, even or you know, as we're talking through, just definitely throw your questions in and we'll make sure we get them answered. Definitely. So I'm just gonna click and drag this PNG uh, into my Unity project, just like that. And now we have our badge item image here. So now we can actually define that. So I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to give this badge a name. We're going to call this first quest badge. Oops. I need chat GPT for the spelling. Um, and then My you bestie. completed, <laughs> you completed your first quest. Um, and now we're going to, we give it a name and description and now let's select the icon. Actually, I could have just uploaded it from here, but I'm going to choose it again. Boom. There we go. There's our cool looking badge. And let's cl click create new badge. And there you go. And you can create as many badges as you like um, to use within your projects. Now let's remember that we've created it. Let's go back to our quest uh, item here. Well, I have a quick question, Jake. So with badges, badges are a part of quest, right? Like, can you have a badge for like visiting a space or is it only through the quest system? Yeah, you can reward badges, um, I believe via uh, visual scripting as well. So if it could be as simple as like, hey, someone joined uh, joined your space, like entered the space, you get a badge. Um, I would definitely make it, if you want to give a badge easily, I would make, have like a very simple task in the space. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's kind of 
the like action reaction mode in there. Like you do something, here's a badge. Uh, maybe right. it's just like read the sign in the space, like enter a certain area. Um, you can also have, you know, that the quest be really simple um, uh, and have a trigger on top of the entrance point in your space. So as soon as, as soon as someone enters the space, they're already in that trigger. And that could be acting like, hey, you came into the space, you completed that task, you know, right away, like here's a badge. Um, that can be another way uh, to do that as well. Got to. But yeah, I mean, you might as well just make, you know, your community at least like read. If you have information about your space or something, it could easily be rewarded. Yeah. Um, with match. But I, I was just curious, but cool. Totally. So, all right. So now let's go back into our quest here in the, on the right hand side and choose first quest badge. And that's all we need to do. So now we should be able to test our scene. So I'm going to click test active scene. And we got the loading bar, which is a great sign. That means everything checked out. And we can test out uh, our scene here. So this is going to load up. It's a pretty simple, simple scene. And you can see here, we're already uploading it. So I packaged it really quickly. Uh, close these other windows, just because I have a lot of spatial windows open. So now you'll see how quickly we can go from Unity right into web. It's going to load in my sandbox. Boom. Here we are. Oh, my God. You can see we've got our quest interface in the bottom left corner called our quest. This is our first quest. And the first thing we have to do is find the staircase. So let's go over here. I, obviously, where, I know where it is. Where could it be? <laughs> where is the quest? I have no idea. <gasps> So if we go over here, boom, find the staircase, checked off. You can see it got highlighted there. Dope. And then now we see, since it was ordered, right, we didn't see what the second task was until we finished the first one. So now we see our second task is collect all the gems. So let's find the gems. Where could they be? <laughs> here they are. And now you can see as I collect each one, one of five, you can see it's... It's progressing in the bottom left. One of five, two of five, three of oh, five. The particles. Four of five. Those particles are playing. Those particles are playing, and the and the collectibles are disappearing, like they were right. defined. It's part of and, like it being like a prefab object, right? Right, and we define those in there. So remember, we said back in Unity, when someone, um, if I go into one of these guys here in our trigger. The trigger event says when someone walks into it, play the particle, and at the same time, in this case, hide that object. So that's what's right. happening. We're playing the particle, hiding the object, and we're adding a task progress to our quest. So now let's go get our last one. Boom, confetti. We did it. We completed, and we got our badge. See at the bottom, you completed, you earned first quest badge. So I can click that. Oh. This is my box, so I don't think it'll show up. Um, Probably won't. Well, yeah, because it's not your yeah. account, is it? Was well, this is this is my account, but since it's in our sandbox, we're just testing oh, it. Oh yeah. It's not actually getting applied. Live, yeah. Um, right. As well, but yeah, we just. No, that is so cool. I mean, that's like literally so simple, and like something as simple as that could give you know your creator something to do, your explorer something to do. And it just makes the experience like 10 times more enriching. And like, that's so simple, you know, like we just learned that in under an hour, even less. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, that was just a few steps. But as you guys can imagine now, like you can add multiple tasks, multiple quests within it to kind of create like a really enriching experience. And I see somebody just said, I, I, I used to use E and Q buttons to turn the camera that will be explained next week, guys. <laughs> that'll be that'll be, fi it'll be well. We have a fi we have a fix for that. That'll be fixed by tomorrow. But it okay. is a little teaser to uh, to next week. While while we have you here, I'll just mm -hmm. like I have the camera modes here for those who are wondering about that. You may have noticed this little camera button icon in the bottom right corner. Mm -hmm. But since you're joining our live, the twenty of you right now that are on the live, and those who watch in the future, um, get a little alpha. But we're introducing, <laughs> introducing next week this new camera modes option. So if you wanted different ways to look around, you know, we've heard feedback that using Q and E and W, A, S, and D and the arrow keys and things like that, you know, was challenging and confusing, especially when traversing through quests or playing games and things like that. 
So we want to give you greater flexibility in how, you know, your avatar moves around. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by default, it'll be similar to before, um, but it'll be more the click and drag. So that's what's, um, you know, defined, um, excuse me, what the middle button is the drag to rotate. So that's similar to what we had before where you click and drag the mouse to look around and use, you know, W, A, S, and D or the arrow keys to, uh, to, to look around. Then the new mode, or one of the two new modes that we're introducing is auto rotate. So now you can see here, I, I can walk. Uh, I love keyboard, auto rotate. <laughs> but as I, when I hit on my keyboard, when I hit A and D and I walk left and right, you can see my camera rotates with me. So I don't have to use uh, Q and E anymore to rotate as I walk around. It makes it much more seamless uh, to walk around. And then yes. with my arrow keys, Right now, I'm hitting up on the arrow key to look up and down on the arrow key to look down uh, as well. And then right and left on the arrow keys are similar to what you were used to with Q and E before in terms of rotating left and right. Um, so that's uh, auto rotate. And then the third option you'll have is pointer lock. So this is you know a little more focused on like kind of deeper with games. Um, so when I click pointer lock, you can see I have this uh, uh, little UI in the top left that says press escape to regain control. Um, I'm actually using my mouse now to look around. So as I move my mouse left and right, I can look around and I'm just using forward and back to look around. So there's a lot less I need to be pressing on the keyboard to look around. I can just press W and S forward and back on the keyboard to look around and just really nicely use my mouse to look up and down. So it's a, it's also another natural way to look around. So we just want to give you more options um, for how you can move around in spatial. Since we have a huge community, uh, everyone who likes different modes of input, now you have different ways uh, to do that. And then just to exit this, I hit escape, I get my mouse back, and I can change back to auto rotate uh, in this case. Yes, I love auto rotate. I that was like one of the things I requested to be honest. <laughs> I feel like it's way more like GTA where I can just like move and like the camera will go with me, which I think is a lot smoother. Um, so I'm I'm really excited about that. And I'm also excited to have like free up some of my hands as I'm navigating um spatial. Um, I think there's some questions in here though. Yeah, let's take some of those to finish things off today. Um Jamie trigger it um let's see when walking with the products on the shelf you would click on them and it would bring up a ui that connects to the shopify store is that an idea so that um so that is something that you can do uh today actually so we'll get into it with with like interactables uh in the future but um you can combine an interactable with visual scripting so there is a visual scripting node um mm -hmm. to open a, a web address um, so if you go into actually a good example, of this is the Hugo Boss showroom. If you complete the quest in Hugo Boss and then you get rewarded with the Hugo Boss wearable at the end, you'll see this giant Hugo Boss outfit that you can walk up to, uh, click on it or press the F key and it'll actually take you to Ready Player Me to go claim your outfit. So that can take you anywhere. You can put a link in there that takes you to Shopify, that takes you to YouTube, that takes you to your own website, whatever you want. Um, so yeah, so using uh, a very simple visual scripting node and an interactable, you can definitely have um, purchasable objects that take you to an outside, you're not purchasable, but objects that take you to an outside website to purchase things or to do whatever you want on that external website. Yep. Uh, uh, let's see, what other questions do we have? Do we post these recordings? Yep, so if you, um, this will be recorded on, uh, it's being recorded now, and this will be available as soon as we're done here on YouTube. Um, so if you go uh, search for Spatial on YouTube, uh, this video will be on there. You can watch last week's recording, which is uh, available as well. Yep, let's see, when do you post it? Well, let's see if it would be great to have an auto pan take videos yes it would be really awesome we used to have um what was it film mode um but there was some good feedback on that yeah uh, definitely definitely here and that making it easier to record content uh in spatial um yeah 
That's great feedback. Let us know how you might want that to look like. I always imagined our improved camera modes looking something like almost like you did in like Madden NFL video games where you had like all these controls to like control your camera modes. Um, I think that would be cool. But uh, I definitely hear on that. Let's take uh, one more and then um, I'll um, definitely, if, you, if we don't need to get to your question today, there's a lot of great questions. Um, definitely jump into our Discord, uh, spatial.io yeah. slash Discord, or you know, uh, on Twitter, hit us up on Twitter um, as well. Uh, happy to answer your questions uh, there also. Definitely. And like, there's tons of Spatial Guides at this point, guys, too. So if you guys just look at the hashtag Spatial Guides, there's tons of incredible creators in our community that are happy to help you guys work through problems and issues or feedback. Um, if you're new to Spatial and if you're an OG Spatial, if you're OG, you definitely know how much we value you guys' feedback. We pretty much build everything <laughs> like based off of what you guys are like asking for and the best way that we can do that, even though it can sometimes take time. We are always, always looking at you guys' feedback. So that's definitely greatly appreciated. Um, but I think those are the most pressing ones, Jake. See, do you think... Okay. I recognize Tom I'm from Twitter. Yeah, Tom. what's going on, Tom? <laughs> um, Let's see. I'm trying to find like one more question. A lot of great questions. If you, I wasn't looking at the chat all, all day, all the session. Yeah, I'm... full screen. I saw yeah. someone that said, um, can space will be used for commercial use? And I was like, for sure. I responded to them on LinkedIn. Um, okay, great. Yeah. Um, there's lots of businesses that use spatial as well. Um. But yeah, I think I think those are most of them, Jake. Unless you see any that you want to, tackle. yeah, not, yeah, none right now. But um, we'll follow up. I'll take a look at those and we'll try and respond to those on. on if you're on Twitch, um, follow us on Twitch. Uh, we just spun up an account there recently, so give us a follow there, uh, as well as you know Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, YouTube. Um, but yeah. Thanks for everybody for joining today. And oh, I feel so excited. Today. We know how to do quests. Yeah. I'm expecting, like, I'm going to be looking at all these accounts, all the people that were in here. I'm like, did they build a quest? So <laughs> <laughs> from this from this live. Uh, but this was awesome. Thanks a lot, Jake. Um, I mean, it's a lot. Every time we do this, it's always like, because it seems so complicated from the outside. And as soon as you click in, it's like, oh, mostly drag and drop. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can see we can do all this with no code. It's just like, you have a quest here, click here, click here, drag and drop, boom. You have a quest. Super dope. Super cool. Dope. All right. Well, thanks, thanks everybody so for much, joining. guys, for joining. Make sure you all hop into Dope Stilo's world. I'm sure he's having a party right now. <laughs> yeah. And we'll see you next week. We're going to have a special guest next week. So definitely mark your calendars um, on Wednesday. Still figuring out the specific time, but should be uh, Wednesday around this time. So stay tuned. Yeah. Normally um, four or five. So. Yeah. Cool. Glad you guys are enjoying it. Definitely tweet us. Let us know how you guys th feel about it. Subscribe to our YouTube. Follow us on Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, everything. It's all <laughs> spatial underscore dio dot io for the most part. So, cool. all right, cool. See you guys later. Peace, Jake. Everyone, peace.